In this video, we're going to summarize all of the curly arrow mechanisms you need to know for the AS AQA organic chemistry. And it can be very confusing because it feels like there's so many of them. But in reality, if you can just learn the three general types of mechanisms, you can then apply them to the specific cases. So in this video, I'm going to use the letter X to represent a halogen atom, which could be fluorine, chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And the three types of reactions we're going to look at are nucleophilic substitution, electrophilic addition, and elimination. So firstly, nucleophilic substitution. A nucleophile is something that's attracted to a delta plus part of a molecule. A nucleophilic substitution you need to know about would be using a haloalkane. So the um, nucleophile will abbreviate to NUC minus. And they're not all negatively charged, but most nucleophiles are negatively charged and will show a lone pair on it too. The specific nucleophiles you need to use are the hydroxide ion, which would form an alcohol. If you use a cyanide ion, it would form a nitrile. Or if you use an ammonia molecule, you can form amines. And just remember where the lone pairs of electrons are too. So on the hydroxide, it's on the oxygen. On the cyanide, it's on the carbon. And on the ammonia, it's on the nitrogen. So in general, the nucleophile comes up to the haloalkane and it's going to be attracted to the delta plus part of the molecule. But to work that out, we need to look for the dipoles. Remember, halogens are more electronegative than carbon. So the halogen atom pulls the electrons towards itself to become delta minus, making the carbon delta plus. And then in the first step, we're going to form a bond between the nucleophile and that delta plus carbon. We call it a tag. So we do a curly arrow from the lone pair right up to that carbon. But now that carbon's nearly got five bonds around it. So at the same time, we have to break that carbon-halogen bond. Both the electrons go onto the halogen, so that makes it a halide ion. It's like it's gaining an electron there. So in our product, we've now joined our nucleophile to the carbon and at the same time kicked out the halogen. So the halogen has been replaced or substituted by the nucleophile and it forms a halide ion. And there's a few things to bear in mind here. So remember with a hydroxide ion, if it acts as a nucleophile, it's going to form an alcohol, but it can also act as a base under different conditions, and then you'd have elimination. So when the concentration of hydroxide ions are low and we use water as a solvent, we get nucleophilic substitution. The other thing to remember was with ammonia, you have to deprotonate um, the NH3 when it joins. And um, also you form an amine, which itself can act as a nucleophile, and then we can get further substitution. The second type of mechanism you need to know about is called electrophilic addition. And if you see a mechanism starting with an alkene, the chances are you're going to be looking at an electrophilic addition reaction. And the reason for that is alkenes have carbon-carbon double bonds. So you've got four electrons between two carbon atoms, and we call it an electron-rich or an area of high electron density. And the electrophile is something that's attracted to that electron-dense area. So it could be X2, for example, Cl2, HX, for example, HCl, or it could be um, H2SO4, that can act as an electrophile, and we need to know the mechanism for that. But even the hydration of an alkene, like uh, the direct hydration of ethene to make ethanol, follows a kind of electrophilic addition mechanism where the H plus acts as an electrophile. So all those different specific electrophiles work in a very similar way. They have a similar pattern of the mechanism. And remember, this will cut down our learning if we can recognize that. So we start with our alkene, drawing the electron-dense carbon-carbon double bond. And the key thing to do is to bring the delta plus part of the molecule, in this case a hydrogen, close to the double bond. Now remember, the curly arrow must go from the area of high electron density to electron, a low electron density. So it goes from the carbon-carbon double bond to the hydrogen. Then we break the HX bond, and that all happens in one go. So in the first step, we're forming a bond between the hydrogen and one of those carbons. So one of those carbons is going to have three hydrogens attached to it. But the other carbon will only have two hydrogens attached. And in fact, it's lost the double bond. So it's only bonded once to a different carbon. So on the second carbon, we're only going to have three bonds to it. Also, because the HX bond is broken and the electrons have both gone to the X, we're going to form an X minus. So our products look like this. One carbon with three hydrogens, 
one carbon with only two hydrogens, so that'll have to be positively charged, and an X minus ion, a halide ion. Now that halide ion attacks the positive carbocation and forms a bond to the carbon atom. So our product is now going to look like this. We're going to add the X to the carbocation to form this thing, um, which would be a haloalkane. Okay. And um, it's an addition reaction because we've taken two molecules and literally added them together. Now, something to bear in mind, if we use X2, there's no dipole in the molecule. It's symmetrical. So the dipole is induced by the carbon-carbon double bond. And if we use H2SO4, you have to know the structure of it to draw the mechanism. So remember, H2SO4 looks like this with a delta plus hydrogen and a delta minus oxygen. And the double bond attacks that delta plus hydrogen and breaks the OH bond there. Also, if you're looking at the hydration reaction, it's the H plus that acts as the electrophile in the first step. The third type of mechanism is the elimination mechanism. And there's actually two types of elimination mechanisms that we need to know about. The first type is elimination from haloalkanes. Remember, when you react a hydroxide in the first step with a haloalkane, it acted as a nucleophile. That was using water as a solvent. But if we use ethanol as a solvent, the hydroxide ions are going to begin acting as a base. And the base is a proton acceptor. Bases accept H plus ions. So if we draw our haloalkane, the OH minus ion acts as a base by attacking and receiving a hydrogen ion from the carbon next to the one that has the halogen attached to it. So we always go for the carbon next door, and then we break the CH bond, and the electrons both go to the carbon-carbon bond. So it's like we're kind of moving a bond here, essentially. And then that carbon on the right now has five bonds to it, so we have to break something, and the X is a really good leaving group. That's our halogen atom. So we can break that CX bond. Both the electrons go on to the X, so we're going to form an X minus a halide ion. So overall, we've formed an alkene with our carbon-carbon double bond. The OH minus, when it reacted with that H, it became an H2O. And when the X was kicked out, it's formed a halide ion, an X minus. And remember, charge is balanced. So at the beginning, you've got a one minus charge. And at the end, you've got a one minus charge. But we can also do elimination from alcohols. There's a slight difference here. Um, the OH group of an alcohol, the hydroxyl group, is not a good leaving group. So we can't get elimination to happen straight away. So we need to do something called protonation. We have to add an H plus ion to it. Remember that oxygen has electron pairs, and those electron pairs can attack the H plus, forming a bond to it. And in this first protonation step, we're adding a proton to the hydroxyl group. What we form is something that looks like this with three bonds to the oxygen, so it becomes positively charged. Charge of balance in these reactions. We've now made that a good leaving group because if we kick that thing out, we're basically going to be kicking out a water molecule, which is very stable. So the next step just looks like the first step of the previous elimination mechanism. We break a CH bond to form a C double bond C, and then we kick out our leaving group. So the product is going to be an alkene. And because a water molecule was released, both those electrons going onto the oxygen remove that charge. You've got a neutral water molecule. And a hydrogen ion also broke off in that step. And the hydrogen ion's acting as a catalyst here because it was used to protonate the hydroxyl group in the first step, but then it's released in the last step. So if you can remember these three general mechanisms and apply them to the specific examples, that's all of the reactions that you need to know for the AQA-AS organic.